What's up guys, what of course you'll be seeing today is a video on how to beat Skolas on Solar Burn, though as of the June 12th the weekly update that came out from Bungie, they'll be removing burns. So this strategy here, even though it was well done for Solar Burn, uh, it will actually become, I'd say, even more relevant once the burns are removed because it will take more time to kill them and more strategy and among your teammates to kill them. So stay tuned and I'll give you the whole strategy and everything. And what I'll do for the video, of course, is break down the mechanics of the Skolas fight. I'll give you a breakdown of the weapons you can be using. And I'll, I'll explain what went on in the video in the background. Uh, and, of course, uh, in the video, you uh, in many videos you've seen, especially with the Solar Burn, with three people, with three Max Galahorns, a weapons, a light bubble, and a synthesis. So, in between, they'll be waiting five to ten minutes for their synthesis and the seven rounds to pop up. Uh, and if you feel like doing that go nuts, the burn, you won't be able to do it anymore, mathematically speaking. So enjoy it while you can, I suppose. Uh, but this run here is actually a bit sloppy, but it'll show you that the run is certainly possible, even with some mistakes, especially on my end. I made some very uncharacteristic, inexcusable mistakes uh, in some adverse conditions. But, to, but showing you a run where there's a few mistakes that runs well shows you that a perfect run makes it even easier and showing you on YouTube that a lot of the perfect runs that many of the people post probably took a good 10 to 20 runs and that might even be a low estimate to get right so showing you a run where I make some mistakes shows you it's highly possible to repeat the method and a perfect run will just cut maybe four or five minutes half the time so to begin before you even think about the fight what you're gonna want are 365 weapons in all slots especially since this was a solar fight you'd want solar weapons uh, it's possible to do it if, say, one or two guys have 331 weapons, but your DPS will suffer, and the longer the fight goes, the higher the chance you'll make mistakes, or someone will get disconnected, or some other pro problem will arise. So the higher the DPS and getting your weapons as high as possible means the weapons will output more DPS and the fight will be shorter, so emphasize that. Your primary should be focusing on the ads that spawn, of course, if you're using rockets and snipers on those guys. Unless it's a dire situation where you get yourself in trouble and you have to shoot, focus your primaries on them from long to medium range. So a good scout rifle comes in handy here. Now in the solar buff here, of course, I, I used uh, Vision of Confluence to take out the captains that spawn with a solar shredder because these guys should be prioritized. They were killer in these runs. Uh, your secondary, preferably a sniper rifle, will come in great handy to not only output high DPS, but also stagger Skolas. Uh, keeping him uh, well, but keeping him staggered prevents him from using his cannon often and prevents him from closing ground on your team as well. It even pushes him back. Your heavy can be a machine gun or a rocket launcher, of course, uh, and a good 365 rocket launcher, especially the old Galahorn, will really help your cause. Lastly, of course, match the burn to Skolas of the Week, though, of course, like I said, this will no longer be relevant. But the reason why I bring this up is many people, because of uh, it being a fallen strike, Many people would match their primary or their secondary weapon to have arc to take out their shield and then they'd switch weapons. But I find that's a waste of time. Don't worry about matching the shield. So if it's a, if they're arc but it's a solar buff, spend those extra few rounds, cut through the shield and you'll burn or just slice right through them after that. Just match the weapons. Now to the mechanics of the fight and this is the key to it. To damage, to, to damage him at all, you're going to need to kill a white glowing servitor to gain a damage buff. This buff will last 20 seconds. The servitor will be located on the right and left side of the map from when you enter the arena. We chose to head left first in the video, of course, because going right would put us against walls and objects in a close quarters environment where Skolas' uh, cannon splash damage will slaughter us because it was a solar buff in this round. Once he gets close or his cannon shots start to become more accurate towards you, rotate along the perimeters of the map to the other side. If you cross through the middle, there'd be so many enemies that you'll just get punched out and then good luck trying to go get your buddy and revive him because he's screwed. Once you knock down his health to about 60%, you will no longer need to kill the servitors to damage him. You can shoot him however you like. But before you do that, bear in mind that at 50% health, a new mechanic will be introduced. One of the three players on your fire team will be hit with Devouring Essence, which basically has a 30 second cooldown. Your screen will glow, will glow greenish, but it won't affect anything else in, in terms of accuracy or mobility. You just need to pass this to a teammate before the 30 seconds expires or you die. More importantly, the person who passed it can't receive it again before passing it to the third member of your fire team. So theoretically speaking, if player A passes it, passes it to player B, B can't receive it again until C receives it. So C then has to pass it to A. 
This means continuous communication between your team, so LFG, LFG groups better damn have a microphone. And rotating as a group and staying within close proximity will help you out exponentially. And additionally, at 50%, you will find the first of two rounds of dismantling mines. If you choose the high DPS route to knock Skolas out quick, uh, one of the three players, preferably an invisible hunter, will need to go and start defusing these mines while the two continue the DPS and hopefully kill Skolas. The second rounds of mines, the first of course occurs at 50% health, the second round of mines will occur at 25% health remaining. If you kill him during the mine defusal, the ads will disappear, but you still have to finish defusing the mines. Uh, and this is what we did for our run here, what we did particularly. we uh, Once we defused the first section of mines at 50%, we went for the kill shot, got rid of him and the ads, and then just defused the mines. And that's the ideal goal. And I find this will be the ideal goal probably when you see most of the, um, the burns removed. You don't have to worry about... Uh, Diffu uh, we'd only have to worry about defusing the mines after he was dead, and that's, of course, that's foolproof, basically. So our overall strategy, to sum up really quick, is to get Skolas down to that 60% health mark in the first 20 seconds worth of damage after killing the first servitor. What we'll usually do once the burn is removed, we started on the left because the right's that close quarters environment. When the, the, the buff, or when the burn is removed, what we'd probably do is start on the right servitor, damage him, rotate along the right side of the map and then go up to where the left side was where the video started because that way that right side perimeter will have no enemies this way so that's probably the way we'll do it with no burn we then group up after the rotation and focus that next 10 percent of damage on him to get rid of uh well to start the mine spawn the hunter will go defuse, we then group back up and try and kill him as fast as possible and then defuse the remaining mines. Of course with the burn it might be a bit slower, you might have to group up and rotate as a group. But with less people trying to kill you, because apparently they're going to uh, look into and remove some of the really killer ads that come out and they're going to base it on... They're not going to be random spawn ads, they're not just going to replace themselves, they're going to spawn as, like, say, I guess 10% or 20% intervers of uh, Skolas' health going down, so that will be nice too. So the key the key is basically just to rotate along the perimeter when Skolas gets close to you. Keep him far away and focus DPS as he gets close to you, and all you have to do is just continually repeat this until he's dead. It's not too bad a run. It's not that difficult a run either. Uh, what made it difficult, of course, as you see the solar run going on here, and this was the part here where we basically went for the kill shot. And I think we were lagging quite a bit, because look at his health. It just continually fluctuated up and down. He should have been dead three, four times over by now. Look at that. But there he goes. Then he finally dies. I get the Elder Cypher. And then it's just uh, diffusing the mines. Uh, but while the buff is on, that's the strategy. Uh, try and knock him out as fast as you can once you've diffused the first set of mines. And then just... Once all the ads and everything disappear, just go for the second set. Uh, but again, stay out of the middle, rotate along the perimeters, and have great communication. Tell your teammates when you're going to rotate. Don't just rotate and say, oh, follow me. And always give out a direction as you're rotating. So say, okay, everyone, rotate right. And then everyone will rotate right. Great communication. You're bunched up. You can pass over the devouring essence. Communication is the biggest key with Skolas. If, if, you're, uh, if you're in a team that one guy doesn't want to listen or one guy insists on his way is right, ditch him, find someone else. If you find a guy isn't using his microphone, ditch him, find someone else. You're just going to save yourself a lot of agony. Unless, of course, you've played together and you know each other's habitual yeah, movements and strategies all together and you can throw that example in as an exception, but not the rule. And that's about it. What you'll see for the remaining part here is how I get uh, the rewards. The process is here. We had a really good run. This one here, I think I finished, like, I, I, I forgot to record the stat sheet. But we, we died, like, f uh, 30 times the first time we tried it before we finally got it right. But the second round here, with, this was our second attempt. I died, I think, eight times total. And, at like, 200 kills, eight deaths over the whole course of the process. Uh, so it was a good run overall, and I'll show you the reward screen. Have any questions, have any comments, of course, feel free to post it in the comment section and I'll reply. If you have a different strategy, post that. We'll compare strategies, compare minds, try and find the optimal strategy for outputting and collecting that loot. Have a good one.
hell, I got sick. What the hell is the Dream Leaker? <laughs> That's what I got. I got another Her Courtesy. Oh my god, I hate that gun.